Welcome back, everyone. Back to part four of Caesar Orgamar, known as Downfall. This is three last bosses in the Siege of Orgamar. So we're gonna just get right into it and start with Siege Crafter. So Garrosh thinks he can cheat old Grizzle out of a payday, huh? Oh, hey now, what do we have here? Oh, look, you're the ones that smashed up my juggernaut. Let's see how you like the newest addition to the War Chief's arsenal, the Iron Star. Go oh, get it, boys. That contraption's got nothing on real goblin engineering. <laughs> oh, oh, maybe it does. I better um go check on the others. Agron, show him who's boss. Now the prelude for this boss is you gotta take out three waves of ads. Which are pretty easy to take down as long as you focus and stay out of anything they throw on the ground. Also, there will be mines targeting you. But back then it was a pain, but now you just walk in here and soul this sucker. <laughs> All right, Shanna, you're up! I can't attack that. And once you defeat them, you're able to jump in. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like I'm in the market for a new assistant. As you can see, now you can engage these crafter black people. Bring him up. Pretty uh, simple fight if you can do the mechanics. Start with his abilities. Launch Saw Blade to launch this at a random player and it'll hover in place until it's removed by an uh, electromagnet. If you come in contact with it, you take physical damage and get knocked back. Now, Protective Frenzy is a healer and tank thing to worry about. When he gets one of his creations destroyed, he goes into a frenzy, increasing his attack speed by 100% for 10 seconds. Now, Electrostatic Charge is when he charges the target with electricity, causing a good chunk of nature damage. It leaves a lingering effect, increasing the damage they take from Electrostatic Charge, and increasing the targets they deal damage to with reactive armor by 200%, and it can stack up to 10 times. Now, beware of this, the automated repair beam. It will repair any automated shutters within distance 5% of their health for every 3 seconds. Now, since we're on Mythic, he gets this ability known as Overcharge. When he activates weapons that arrive on the assembly line, which is over here and over there, to overcharge one, increasing their effectiveness and power. We also have Energized Defense Matrix. If all three weapons make it through the line and into back to the penalty machine, it will become overcharged using the extra sense energy to boost his defense system, granting him a damage reduction of 90% for 20 seconds. Now the ads none of the automated shredders join in, and their abilities is reactive armor. They'll have reduced damage taken by 90, so people who have the electrostatic charge on to them will deal a good chunk of damage to them. But they also can be damaged by Black Fuse's abilities and weapons on the assembly line. Death from above is when it flies up into the air and slams back on the ground, doing damage within a radius. But they also are stunned when they land, taking additional 200 damage for 5 seconds, so that's when you need to light them up as well. Now, Overload, this will 
periodically cast on an automated shredder, dealing damage to the raid members not currently on the conveyor belt. It increases its damage by 30%. Now the assembly line is when you jump into the pipes here on the side and you get thrown out onto these assembly lines. Machines will come through and you need to destroy them. But at the same time, you got to be careful of the crawler mines that will jump down onto the conveyor belt. So as you see, detonate is they can do massive damage to everyone within distance and knocking them in the air. Now the crawler mines are vulnerable to roots and stuns for one minute after joining the battle. So that's when you need to attack them. After their break-in period expires, they lose the vulnerability and their speed increases. Now they can get overcharged, and they can be—they'll be able to create two more of themselves when they're destroyed. We're gonna get right into this and have a little fun. It's too far away. Time to mix business with all the things you want. My legacy <laughs> will live on. Now, I did forget to mention the other items on the belt here will be electromagnet, laser turret, and shockwave missiles. Missiles just launch drill tip shock missiles into the ground, save barrage of drills. Each ring of the seismic energy does damage if you get caught into it, so you're able to dodge it. Superheated is from the laser turn. It'll just basically fire a line of energy you can dodge pretty easily. Now magnetic charge it'll start pushing, pulling people and crushing them causing physical damage every second. But it also draws in all the saw blades that are currently on the ground. So you need to decide which ones you want to destroy at the current time. So if you got like a ton of saw blades, leave the magnet alone because you need to get rid of them all. Now we're heading up to the next boss, which are the, I believe, the paragons of the galaxy. Now, yes, you will be fighting all of these mantid. <coughs> Now, during this time, when you fight and kill one, whatever one's defeated, the other ones that are currently active will heal to full and get a stack bonus of 8 damage every 50 seconds. Now, ready to fight, they'll have this aura on them to let you know which one's joining the fight next. And the power of the Paragons, after a Paragon is defeated, one of the players can actually take depending on which one it is, abilities from them. Now we have the Bloodseeker, the Sector, the Swarm Keeper, the Locust, the Prime, the Lucid, the Poison Mine, the Manipulator, and the Wind Reaver. If I remember right, Wind Reaver always is the last one that come into the fight. Since I'm a tank, I'll be able to take Prime's ability. Instead of going over all these abilities, I'm just going to wait a couple seconds, let you guys read up on this, because my third is a little sore. This is the ability you could take from them, known as Bloodthirsty. That's for damage.
All right, you should have been able to have enough time to read up on that. Like I said, I apologize, my throat's a little sore. So I don't really want to read too much today. Ah, more of Vulgen's revolutionaries. <coughs> You've made it. Have you found Thrall? <coughs> I am badly hurt. He insisted on going ahead alone. Tell me, how goes the battle up above? What of Nazgrim? Speak to me! Ah, oh, Nazgrim. A great leader and a fine warrior. He valued his oath to the war chief more than his life. I tried to tell him. To tell him that Hellscream betrayed us. Cast aside a war chief's responsibility to his own people. But Nazgrim, too loyal, too proud. Damn Hellscream. His ambition tore our horde apart. Go on. Find Thrall. Finish this. I will live. As you see there, you just gotta kill a bunch of these ads. Technically, I Look, think... brothers, the Wakener is here. All you have to do is kill Cobalt. They made it this far? I told you the others needed some microsonic genetic alterations. How illogical. Did they not hear your warning, Jack? We meant to serve a power far greater than they or their gods. It matters not. The old one will not suffer their intrusion. We have endured the usurpers, their children, the loss of the old one, and soon, you. <laughs> we will slay you all as easily as we slew the Pandaren of old. And then the old one will remake this world for the Mantid. Come, children of the Titans, you face the Paragons. Clicking on this will literally start the fight. Yes, new test subjects. Perhaps I could have used some enhancements. Avenge me, brother. Move too slowly. You now face the crime. You must be must you know. Have you come to try to end the evil? So many wonderful varieties. Which can you carry one last time? It's your luck wasn't the only one with a strong voice. Well fought, Wakener. You will. Oh, I need a time. Now, as you can see, you also get a 60 minute buff. And I believe also, if they're in that buff, you get the uh, title. Gone up to the last boss known as Garage Hellscreen. Now, if you want to shrink these puddles here, you just gotta stand in them. You'll get a damage debuff, but also, I mean, uh, you'll get a debuff that damages you, but I believe you also get a buff that boosts your damage as well. It is not too late, Garrosh. Lay down the mantle of Warchief. We can end this here, now, with no more bloodshed. Ha! <laughs> Do you remember nothing of honor, of glory on a battlefield? You who would parlay with 
the humans who allowed warlocks to practice their dark magics right under our feet. You are weak. We are the Orcish Horde, the true Horde. We die, bloody and thrashing on the field of battle, like true Orcs should. You are an orc no longer, and speak for none but yourself. You betrayed our people to forge your fragile alliances, and I will take great pleasure in tearing them apart. Then you have forced my hand. I will correct the mistake I made long ago. Spirits of the wind, the earth, the water, Hear my call! Come to my aid! <laughs> Fool! My dark shaman have twisted and tortured the elements for miles around. They cannot hear you now. Once again, you prove too weak and powerless to do anything. Never powerless, Garrosh. And never alone. So, you wish to face off against a real Orc war chief. So be it. <clears throat> They're all got his butt kicked. Let's see, here's the last boss. There are technically four phases. Actually, five if you're on Mythic. Actually, you know, four because that's the Mythic stage. <clears throat> Stage one is the true horde where you just basically have ads spawning. The only thing you truly need to be worried about are when these iron stars come out as you see on the sides. Just don't just get to the right side where they're com not coming from and you'll be fine because if you hit by them, you get killed. Instantly. Periodically, he'll throw you into the heart where you need to kill all the ads to break his shield and start fighting him until he kicks you out. Part the way through the fight, he'll absorb the power as he gets more and more energy, getting these abilities. But on stage three in Mythic, you get teleported to a new world where he has full health, full corruption, and everything, and they're all empowered. Basically, he'll fire missiles at players, creating a minion. Empowered Touch here. Will transform them into a Shah that is immune to stuff. They try to spread it. When it's removed, you lose 20% of your maximum health for the remainder of the fight. He'll throw his weapon, and his weapon will stay there, creating a puddle. Well, it can't be destroyed, but you can make it lose his HP to shrink the puddle size, but it will regrow over time. Grippy Despair. It's something he'll do, which causes shadow damage every sec for 10. So I'll just get right into it. I need to get closer. I, Garrosh, son of Grom, will show you what it means. Anger, hatred, fear. They are weapons of war. The tools of a war chief. As he, phase two, he heals up. Yes, I can see it now. I can see the future of this world. A world ruled by the Horde. My Horde. The Old One calls to you. This is the Shaw Realm. I want to grab this. Reduces your damage you guys take. 
And as you can see, he's generating energy. Every 25, he gets an ability and power. You will die when you leave this place. There is nothing left of your world. The true horde will come to pass. I have seen it. It has shown me. I have seen mountains of skulls and rivers of blood. And I will have my world! There's the empowered weapon. I see doing damage with Trinket. Now here's the you special stage on Mythic. You have won. You are blind! I will force your eyes open! See, on Mythic, this is the other area. No. No! This world is my destiny. My destiny. As you can see, we're in Stormwind. Uh, now you can see they're sitting in an invading force. There is the warships, the uh, war zeppelin, I guess you would call it. Get back, you just need the portal of reality, but as you can see, uh, there's many recognizable uh, faces here. Usual, I don't get those shoulders he drops or the mount he can drop as well. Which I'll show you loot. He drops this Corcoran Juggernaut, which is basically the Iron Juggernaut's look, mount form. <coughs> ah, here we go. And a lot of people were after these the Tusks of Manoroth. If you play Classic, you remember, these used to actually be on a statue back in Orgrimmar before it was re built as a tr tribute to remember the, the orcs past. <clears throat> now since I'm Horde, I gotta talk to Thrall. If you're Alliance, I believe you talk to Varian. So let's uh, get right into it and talk no to Thrall and see what happens. Friend. You disappoint me, Garrosh. You are not worthy of your father's legacy. His punishment is not for you alone to decide. I won't let you take him. We have all suffered from his atrocities. My people, more than any other. Let him stand trial in Pandaria. There, we will meet out justice for all. The Horde needs its true war chief now more than ever. Yes, but it was you that held the Horde together during this madness. It was you that protected our honor. From this day forward, Vol'jin, if you lead, I will follow. I am not worthy.
but I will give my all for the Horde. I will speak to your war chief. I speak for the Horde. Very well. The Horde has committed heinous crimes, Vol'jin. But some among you fought against Garrosh's tyranny. For that, I am willing to end this bloodshed. But know this. If your Horde fails to uphold honor as Garrosh did, we will end you. Loktar, friend. What is it you wish? Well, that is the end of the Siege of Orgrimmar. This has been a stand from Mysterio Gaming, asking you to please like, sub, and subscribe, and share. <clears throat> and also go check out the Twitch channel. Until then, I'll see you guys and gals in the next video.